Hello, today I'd like to show you how to make a little drawstring bag which is kind of cute, kind of little, it'd be great if you had little collections of things like marbles or little toys or little, let me think of other nice things, oh maybe chocolates, all sorts of nice little things will go into a little bag like that. And as you probably know by now I like little bags and things. So th this little bag I've made um, fairly simply using six inch squares. So it actually takes five six inch squares to make this little bag which actually is fully reversible. If you turn it inside out you've got and if you use different colors you've got a different looking bag but it's just the one bag either way. So I thought I'd show you how to do that. I have done a pattern and the pattern is on my website. It's called Drawstring Bag um, and I've I thought it would be fun to make some little things using just small amounts of fabric. So what we're going to do is cut four of, we need five squares to make the bag and you need some cord. So you need um, two, two lengths of cord that are 15 inches long so that we can do that. So we need to cut, decide on one of the squares. So if they're all different colors, like I've got different colored squares here, we need to decide which one we want to use for the little casings and the little ends on the cord. And then the other four colors get used. Of course you could make this in one colour but I've used multicolours because I thought that was kind of fun. So I'm going to line up my, I'm going to show you how to cut all this out because you need to cut the shape for the bag. So and that's all shown to you in the pattern here as well. So we've, we've picked out one that we're going to use to cut the little casings and the cord ends and then the other four if we layer them together and position them on the board so that they line up, we can cut the, the shape out of those ones. So I'll start with the cord casings and the cord ends. So I've got one square sitting here already, it's a six inch square lined up so that it's sitting on the lines on my board and I'm just going to cut it into two inch strips at the moment. So we're going to position this on and two inches in from the edge I'm going to cut through there and then I'm going to move it across and cut again at two inches. So we've got three two inch strips from our six inch square. And then to make the cord ends, two of them, sorry, the casings, which is this little top bit here where the cord goes through, I'm going to lay the two of them around so that I can see which way they're going. And I'm going to cut them four and a half inches long. So again, I use my ruler and the markings on my board to help with this. And my ruler conveniently is four and a half inches wide, but I would count in so that I'm cutting at four and a half inches there. And I would just trim off those bits. Now we don't need those bits, but we now have two pieces ready for the casings. And then we need the little, the little bits that go on the end of the cord. We need to cut a couple of those. So we're going to cut those at one and a half inches wide. So they're two inches, now they're two inches long, but they're one and a half inches wide. And again, we don't need this little piece. So that's that's pretty much all the leftover that we get. And then for the actual bag shape, we're going to li again line that up so that it sits nicely within some markings on your board. And to, so to get this nice angled shape that we've got here, we're going to come in one inch from the two top corners as you're looking at it, and we're going to measure and cut down there. So we're going to come in one inch and up one inch here and lay the ruler so that it sits on those markings. So in one inch and up one inch from the bottom. And then we can just cut all four of those together. And then we don't need that bit. And then do the same thing on this other side over here. Again, one inch up and one inch in. So we want to line our ruler up with that and we're just going to cut that away. So you can already see that shape is coming together, but we just need to round these corners. So to do that, all I've done with my rotary cutter is starting again one inch in here, and we're going to curve around and cut to that one inch where we cut the other angle from there. So we just cut around there, and I'm going to do the same thing here, one inch here to the one inch up there. So it doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but it gives you a little curved corner. And so now you can see I've got four squares that have all got this 
shape ready to sew the bag. So then I'm going to do some pressing, make the casings and bits, and show you how to put it together. It's fairly quick to put together. Just plug my iron in and bring the iron over. We just need to press a couple of bits here before we get started. So we'll start off with the casings. So on these, we just need to press in maybe half an inch from the end on each end and we're just going to stitch those down and the same on this one press in about half an inch and then we're going to stitch them down but while I'm here pressing I might press the little pieces for the cord ends as well oh, I didn't do a very good job of that one did I just re-pressing just to get it straight Okay, so on the cord end pieces, we're going to do a similar thing, we're just, but only press in just a little bit, like a quarter of an inch on each of the two shorter sides. Or more, it could be half an inch, it, it doesn't really matter at this stage, but you perhaps want to do both of them similar. And then when we sew these together, we're going to fold these up and we're going to sew down each side for the cord ends. And on here, we're going to sew the two um, sides there. So I'll just do some of that so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so just a quarter of an inch in from the folded edge. I'm just going to seam these. So these ones I'm folding right side together so that the little seam allowance is on the outside and again just sewing the little seam in there. I just want to back stitch the top of that and the same on this one. Then I'll come back and do the other side and then we'll be ready to do the next bit. So I'm going to cut those apart. So I finished sewing both sides of my uh, casings and cord ends and I'm just going to snip those apart and I'm going to bring the iron over and show you the next step in a second. But on the little cord ends while we're here we might as well do this. I'm just going to snip in the seam allowance, snip off the little corner top and bottom. That's just going to help it turn and sit a little bit better because it's a fiddly little shape but if I do that I find it works quite well and we'll be coming back to these at the end of the bag but in the meantime we've got them made ready and then they just need to be turned out the right way because they're currently the wrong way. So I'll just do one of these just to show you what we're looking for. What we're trying to make here is just some little pockets so that when you have got your raw ends of your cord they're just going to sit inside this little pocket but I'll show you how to do that when we got the cord in the bag. First of all, though, we better make the bag. So that's all it's going to be is just a little pocket so that the cord ends can pop in there and we can stitch it across. But on to the casings now. We'll set those aside for the moment. We'll, with the casings, I've, so I've stitched both ends over. And now we're going to fold those in half and press them again, so right side out. So that's the bit we're going to see. And the same with the other one. And then, because we've already got our shapes cut, we're ready to do the next stage. So decide if you're going to use the bag more one way and not likely to be turning it out the other way, you need to choose your outside fabrics if you've got all different colours like I have. So I'm going to just pick this red one because it's in front of me. And I'm going to pick the blue one because it's in front of me. And I'm going to... Position these now onto your bag shape. So these should be quarter of an inch in, or slightly more even, it wouldn't matter if they were a little bit more, because you need to have a seam allowance beyond where the casing sits. So we could use a couple of pins to hold those if you like. 
um, and we're going to stitch across that top edge just to hold the casings in place. So I'll just come and do that. So just with your normal seam allowance, just st stitch across the top there with both of these pieces. So that's that bit done. Snip off my threads, cut them apart. These are a fun little bag, great little gift bags. Um, like imagine a nice little face washer and bar of soap. I don't know really what people like to give as gifts, but things like that are nice in a nice little bag. So now with right sides together, take your other two shapes that you've already cut and position them on top. And we're going to again repeat that sewing line but on one of them we need to leave a little gap in between for turning so you want to leave maybe a couple of inches or so in between your sewing that you're not stitching at this stage so that we can turn the bag out through that gap so again back to the machine and stitch across these ends This one we're going to just do two short bits of sewing so that we've got a gap in between for turning. And now we're going to take those pins out. We're going to do a little bit more pressing. It's quite good to press things as you go because then everything just sits kind of nice and tidy and neat. So I'm just going to press the, the casing one way at the moment, press that, but I'm also going to sorry, I also want to press it the other way as well. And it, this just helps when we turn it out later on that it's all going to sit nicely when it's had both of those sides pressed. And on this one, because we've got that gap of, in our sewing there, snip off my little thread that I stretched across there. So the casing is already attached to the, to the blue side. Sorry, I'm getting myself confused now. But we want this one here, where, the, where we've left the gap, we still want to press that as if it's sewn. So we want to press that line across there so we'll do that but we'll also press it like we did with the other one with the seam going the other way once we've got that pressed line in for the gap we can turn it around and do it so that the seam's going the other way now as well okay back to the sewing so now we've got two shapes like this and we want the casings one to go one way one the other simply so that when it crosses at the seam when we're doing our seam allowance here the seams can nestle together rather than be both in the same direction so i'm going to now pop these right sides together the two pieces and we're going to sew all the way around just with our regular quarter inch seam allowance and we can turn it out because we know we've left a gap in there so it doesn't really matter where you start and stop with this we're just going to sew all the way around now, my seam allowance that I've got on the end here isn't huge, so I just need to make sure I don't catch my casing into my seam there. So I might just start somewhere here and stitch all the way around just for the quarter inch seam allowance. So when you get to a curve, just ease it gently around the curve time and continue on all the way around. So here I am, back to where I started.
good thing about reversible bags, if you've put something inside that you then like better outside, you can just have it out that way. So I just want to, if you can't manage to pop your fingers through, you might find something helpful like a little um, chopstick or a little stick or something that will help you push that seam out nicely. And the other one is going to go inside, so actually we don't need to push it out, we just need to push it in. So pushing it into that shape that we've got there of the bag, right into the little cornery bits. And it's already looking great. But we've got to close off this corner now. So I'm actually going to top stitch around that bag. And I find when I'm top stitching tight little corners, I actually like to turn things inside out so that I'm stitching from the right side. However, we've got to make sure that we're going to catch in this piece here so that it closes the gap without it being an obvious closing. You could slip stitch it close, but I find that I like to do the top stitching. So I'm just going to pop a pin in to hold that in place so that when I stitch around I can stitch well right over the pin if I want to but it's it's just holding it and it shouldn't slide around. So this is a little bit tight, it might be hard for you to see but I'm going to top stitch just near the casing but on the bag about an eighth of an inch down from the seam there. So it is a bit tight and possibly not easy for you to see because of that however. By turning it inside out this because I want to stitch from the right side for no particularly good reason, I just prefer to do it that way, then uh, I find that it's easier if it's inside out, otherwise it's too small to get into the machine to do it the other way. So I'm just starting at the side and I'm just going to go all the way around. And I've gone, because I've pinned in from the, at that angle in, I can go straight over that pin. So when things are a little bit fiddly like this, just take your time and find that you can get there without too much drama. If you try and rush it, you might run into some little problems. Trust me, I know. I'm not a patient person by nature. So there I've sewn it. You can't really see that that's been a gap there. I'm going to turn it back out the way that I have chosen to have it, but it wouldn't matter which way you have it. And that's my little bag, and I'll just show you now how to do the little cord bit. Um, I'm going to use a safety pin to help insert the cord. So I'm actually going to pop both bits of cord, so they were cut to 15 inches long each, onto the one safety pin. And I'm going to insert that inside this little casing that we've made and push it through with both cords at this stage, but shortly we'll, that will change. Okay, so we've got that far. Now I'm going to take one of the cords off the pin, but leave one on and continue on round through the other side. Pull that through a little bit, but don't pull it right through. Make sure that it's still at the other end. And pull that, push that one through there. And the reason we do this is because we want them to come from opposite sides, so they, the other one has to come back the other way. But I usually leave the other one just sitting for the moment while I do this, so that I don't drag it back through when I'm putting the next cord in. So I've got one of these little cord end pockets ready to go here, so we made them earlier, and I'm going to just insert my cord ends into that and I'm just going to stitch across that end there. And I usually do a, like a little back stitch over the cords just to help hold it nice and firm as well. So I'm going right the way across. And then I'm going to back stitch right the way back. And that's how I've got that in there. So I'm now going to come back 
I want both of these ends out to the opposite side because there's no point having them about the same side. So I want to take this end, pop it on my pin, and go back through this casing here. And then I can pop the other cord on end on that end, which I just haven't turned out yet, so I'll do that now. And we're nearly done. How fun is that? Only quick and easy. And only five, six inch squares to make it. Oops. Okay. Put my little ends of my cord in there, in my little pocket, and stitch across that one. So there we have it, we've got our little bag, we've got our little cord ends on, and by putting the cords in from opposite sides like that, when you just pull that, that just pulls up nicely. And I just think that's a great little bag for no particular use at all, but just because. So thank you. <laughs>